Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast. My name is Jack Bosch, and in this episode, we're going to talk about the power of systems and follow-up. How literally you can double or triple the amount of deals that you get with using the proper systems and the proper follow-up. All right, let's get going. Welcome to the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Investing Podcast with your hosts, Jack and Michelle Bosch. Together, let's uncover the secrets to building true wealth through real estate and living a purpose-driven life. All right, so here we are back with our podcast on this, on, on systems and follow-up in real estate, particularly in land flipping. So as you guys know, we are, I'm the co-creator of the Land Profit Generator Real Estate Land Flipping Method and Land Profit Generator Method, and you can find out more information under www landprofitgenerator.com and we also have coming up very very soon and on September 14th already a five or actually it's a seven day five or seven day um, detailed training free training class inside of our Facebook group you can actually register for it under now under the website www.lpglab lpg l a b right lpg lab stands for we, we call it the lab because we are going to basically dissect how our method works and share with you that step by step in live sessions. Both Michelle and I, the other co, my co-founder and us, and the two co-founders, Michelle and I, I'm going to go to that to, to a week long uh, every day. We're going to come live and we're going to share with you exactly how this all works. So, with that said, let's talk about systems because here's the thing: there's I can talk about land flipping like all day long. As a matter of fact, more than all day long, probably all week long, days and days at a time. Because there's so much you can talk about it. At the same time, it's such a simple process, right? Remember, the process is like five steps. You go, so you go contact owners, right? You select counties, right? You select an area you want to do business in. You select, you you get a list. You uh, if you want to dissect it, it's more like seven steps. But basically, you you collect, you, you identify an area. You get some leads. You send out the letters, right, to them. They contact you back. You do a deal analysis. You make offers. You get deals on a contract and you go sell those deals. That's it. There's no mortgages involved. There's no appraisals involved. There's no jumping in the car, sitting with old ladies at the kitchen table, making them cry to get you a cheaper deal. There's no, uh, there's none of that stuff involved here. It's just as simple as it is. Having said that, everyone can get a deal, but in order to get consistent deals on an ongoing basis, you need to have systems, you need to have automation, and you need to have follow, uh, follow up. Now, how do you do that? Well, we have a system that we call the Investment Dominator and the Land Profit Generator and the Investment Dominator go hand in hand together. As a matter of fact, as of pretty much right now, we no longer even make the Land Profit Generator Home Study Course available without the Investment Dominator system. As a matter of fact, we actually said we are actually now making the Investment Dominator available and adding the, to it the system so that you learn the software and to learn our method with the software in, in our program. Right? And that's what, uh, and in the, in the Land Profit uh, LPG Lab, we're going to show you exactly how to do those two, how, how, how these two play a role together. Now, having said that, uh, systems that you need to pay attention to. You need to have an automation system that you can get those letters out, that you don't talk to the, sell, to, talk, talk to the sellers, that they are actually being talked to by somebody else. Because this is not about you creating more work for yourself. This is about you having more freedom in your life. So the second thing you need to do is you need to have follow-up. So let's look at that. Let's say you take a thousand letters. You send out a thousand letters. You get, let's say, if it's just a two, three percent response rate, something not so fantastic, but not so bad either, right? The house flippers get like a quarter of a percent response rate. We get, let's say, if it's two, three percent. Let's say you get 25 phone calls from that or 30 phone calls from those thousand letters. So now what you do after you get 25 or 30 phone calls, you got to do some deal analysis on them. You figure out what these properties are worth and you make offers. So now what happens is of these 30, let's say, let's say it's 30, of these 30 on average, every time we send out about anywhere between 25 and 40, at the beginning it might be all the way up to 50, but over time it, it settles in about a 25 to 35 kind of offers, you get one deal accepted. So that means you send out 30 offers, you can reasonably expect to get one offer accepted. So now you have one deal. However, you send out a thousand letters. You got 25 or 30 phone, let's say 30 phone calls. 29 of those 30 people have not yet accepted, right? So what do you do? 
What do you do? Do you just move on to the next county? Do you just move on to the next batch of letters? No, the key is in the follow-up. The key is in the follow-up. So one of the things you want to do is you want to go and develop a process that you, within a certain time period, reach out to those buyers, to those sellers one more time. Send them a second offer, send them a, do a phone call, uh, send them a postcard, do anything that you want to. And uh, for our coaching students, we have an actually detailed process for that. But um, we do something to, to stay in contact with them so that they don't just drop off because it's very possible that let's say the husband got the offer and the husband thought it was junk mail and tore it away when the wife was waiting for the offer because she wanted to get rid of this piece of crap property, which is not a piece of crap property. It might be a $50,000 piece of property, but she wanted to get rid of that before it costs them more property taxes, right? Or, uh, and so on. So, so, or the other way around, right? That it was thrown away. Or the post office delivered it at the neighbor's address by mistake, right? The post office right now is horrible. But uh, they are, they're taking forever to deliver stuff and so on. Or because of COVID-related post office delays, it got there, you gave them 10 days to accept, and it got there the 12th day. And they look at it and it's like, oh, man, it's already expired. And they say, like, let me call them back. But then they put it somewhere, they put some newspapers on it, they put some other stuff on it, they forget. Have you ever gotten a piece of paper in the mail and you've forgotten to follow, that you said, oh, let me follow up on them, and then you lose it? Now, if you're highly structured, you might have not had that experience, but then ask your spouse, ask your children, ask your friends, right? Of course, people that are not totally super well organized constantly lose stuff. So as a result, um, you're like, I just had to chase to their living room looking for a remote control for our TV. It ended up being underneath the couch. Go figure. I didn't put it there, right? But somehow I got there. So, so things happen, uh, stuff gets put in different places, and all of a sudden they're like, forget about it, and then it's like, oh, it's an old offer, I got, I got it four weeks ago, two weeks passed, they forgot about it, they find it again, and they're like, oh man, now they're not gonna accept it anymore, they throw it away. However, you're still, obviously, you're still gonna honor, honor that offer. So if you don't follow up, you're not gonna get those offers accepted. So follow up is a key piece. Now, what other systems do you need in order to get deals done? Now, by the way, why do I say you can double or triple your deals? Because with proper follow up, you can get instead of one deal out of this 30, you can get two or three potentially out of those 30 offers that I just explained in this kind of uh, scenario, really much uh, a day-to-day -day scenario, right? So that's uh, one of the things you want to do. Now, the same thing is actually on the selling side. If you want to sell a property, when you sell, when you when you sell it, you put it on Craigslist, you put it on Facebook Marketplace, you put it on, on Zillow, and people contact you and say, like, hey, is this property still available? So the first answer is yes, the property is first of it is still available. But then you don't just say yes, it's still available, because that ends the conversation. You go and you say, Hey, yes, it's available. What are you into? What are you looking for? And they're going to be like, oh, well, I'm looking for about one to five acres in this area. And it's like, okay, great. What are you looking to do with the property or on the property? Well, I'm kind of looking at a place that have with good road access that I can bring my RV to that has electricity to it because I'm kind of, instead of being in an RV park, I want to be in a property uh, out of my own land, right? It should be about not too far away from the city. Well, great. The property that you asked me about that fulfills all the criteria. So you go into a sales conversation. But what most people do is they don't, that is instant follow-up for me. Because what most people do, they're like, they're like, hey, is this property still available? Yes, the details are on the website. And now you send them to the website. Now they go to the website, and guess what? Are they really going to go to the website, read through all the stuff, and look at the map, and look at everything, and read through every detail? No, they're way too lazy. They're like, well, if they're, gonna not, if they're not going to give me any more information, I'm going to go somewhere else. And then I go click on the next listing in that same area. And if that person is willing to engage a little more and follow up a little more, then they buy that person. But now let's say you do better than that. You say, yes, the property is available. What, uh, what, what questions do you have about it? They ask you a few questions, you answer them. It's like, great, would you, uh, would you like to buy the property? It's like, well, first I want to see it. It's like, great, let me give you the directions to the property. I give them the GPS coordinates or the address, whatever you have for the property. And then they're like, okay, when are you planning to look at it? Okay, at this Saturday. Good. So what happens is, it's like, okay, let me know what a lot of people do as a mistake. They say, let me know afterwards how you liked it. 
and then they put the ball into the court of the buyer to remember to call them back after they looked at the property. Now, here's the thing. In reality, only half of the people who say, perhaps even less of the people who say they're going to go look at the property, actually went to look at the property. So if they didn't go look at the property, then what's going to happen? If they didn't look at the property, they're going to go, they're not going to contact you again. And if you don't follow up, that's the end of the story. So you got somebody that was interested enough to pick up the phone or text you or email you and ask all these questions and the conversation went back and forth like eight times, and then you're not going to follow up? Of course you need to follow up. You need to follow up freaking until they tell you, leave me alone, I picked another property, or leave me alone, I changed my mind, I don't want to buy anything at all. Until they say one of those two things, you got to follow up every single week, twice a week, then over time once a week, then over time tw twice a month, then over time once a month. I mean, you just got to go harass in the best sense, most loving way of the word, that person until they say, no, I'm no longer interested in that property. Right? So here's how you do it. You basically go, the weekend has passed, you use our investment dominator system, you set up a task. You can set up tasks for yourself. So like Jim Smith called in, interested in property, whatever, one, two, three, four. So like, you're great. I want to set a task for myself on Monday morning to call him back or text him back or email him back, whichever medium of conversation you've chosen with them or they've chosen with you, really they initiated it. And then contact them back. If it's Facebook text messages, you go Facebook Messenger. Hey, just want to follow up. You said you wanted to look, look at the property on Monday. Have you had a chance to go look at it? And they're like, oh, man, I forgot. Thank you very much. Now, I haven't gotten it. But, um, but so it's like, okay, when are you going to look at the property? Well, I have an open. I can probably look until next week. Okay, great. So next week. Now, in the meantime, you can say, listen, I got another five people interested in the property. Would you like to place a deposit on the property to lock it down? Right? Don't just let another week pass before they go out there. Perhaps they forget again. And then it's another week and they keep dragging you along. It's first come, first serve, guys, right? So if somebody else now comes and buys the property, it's gone. So basically say like, uh, would you like to let like, No, I don't want to, but I'm gonna go for sure look at it on, 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 on Saturday. Good, you know, and you know what? What happens on Thursday, Friday, you contact them again. It's like, hey, you're still planning to look at the property? Because I got people looking at, and uh, you're, so, so make sure you go there. You put some pressure on them to make sure that if they truly want the property, they go jump in the car and they go look at the property, right? Now they looked at the property and now if they don't like it, they, then they still won't call you back. If they do like it, they probably call you back. But either way, Monday comes around, another task, you follow up again. Hey, have you had a chance now this weekend to go look at the property? And it's like, yes, I did. And you know what? I didn't like this, this, or this, or that. Well, what did you didn't like about it, right? Now engage them again, right? Perhaps this is something that you can turn into a positive, something that they hadn't considered and so on. But either way, if they liked it, perhaps they were busy, they were bogged down with work. And it's like, oh man, thank you for calling me. Yes, 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 I loved it. I meant to reach out to you, but my mother-in-law came visiting, this came happening, this happening. I had my, my kid uh, put a, I don't know, uh, uh, something on her toe. We had to bring her to the emergency room. You know, stuff happens in people's lives. And you, if you follow up, you can do this, well. you, can, you can get these deals done. Now, how do you follow up if you have 10 people, if you had, say you have five properties, and in each property, 10 people are inquiring about it. How are you gonna keep 50 pieces, 50 different people organized? Like, I can tell you, I won't be able to do that unless you have a system. You need a buyer's list, and you need to have an ability to have notes in the buyer's list. You need to have an ability to associate those buyers to a property that you're interested in. You have to have the ability to set tasks in all those different things you can do with our software, the Investment Dominator. So when you have the Investment Dominator, you don't have to actually rely on your memory to memorize things like that. You can literally enter it into the system, you can have the system remind you, and therefore you can have those proper follow-up things. The same again on the purchasing side. You want to put a reminder in that three weeks after you sent those letters, you go. You need to go and send them a, a second offer, or you reach out with a voicemail, or you reach out with a with a text message or something. Then you need to set yourself reminders for that, and you can do that if you have the proper system. So all of that is crucially important. The same thing. You have a deal in escrow. Escrow company, title companies, right now are being flooded 
with refinancing requests because we're at the record low interest rates again. So everyone that has bought in that four or five and a four and a half, five percent interest rate a year or so or two ago, uh, they're now refinancing at 2.8% or something crazy like that, right? So now the title companies are busy with that and they're making way more money refinancing those properties than, than going through a somewhat a complicated closing process on a $15,000 or 25 or 35 or $45,000 land piece. So therefore, you need to be on top of them. Again, how you need to do that? You need to have follow, uh, you need to follow up with the title companies. Make sure that they don't put your, your deal to the bottom of the stack. But if you have a buyer lined up and you have a seller lined up, don't let it take 60 days for the title company to close. They should be able to close in four or five days. If everything's ready, documents will go out, money's being wired in, uh, signatures are being recorded, and, and it's all done. So it all comes down to, to, to systems and follow-up. You gotta follow up with your sellers, you gotta follow up with your buyers, you gotta follow up with your title company, you gotta follow up, follow up, follow up. And luckily we have a system called the Investment Dominator that allows you to do that. So with that said, I wanna thank, say thank you. You can find out more about that on land, uh, if you go to lpglab.com, register there. Then also one of our concierges will actually reach out to you, will welcome you, will uh, chat to you. And if you wanna know more about the Investment Dominator, they can tell you at that point more. And then obviously in our, uh, in our you know, five or seven day session, we're gonna lay out exactly how this entire process works. So with that said, thank you very much for attention. This concludes our newest episode of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate podcast. Good luck. Stay in touch. Join our Facebook group. Go to lpglab.com. Register for upcoming five-day or seven-day training class. This is 100% for free, and I'll see you there. All right. Bye-bye. Enjoyed this episode? Then make sure you like, subscribe, and post your comments and questions below the video. We're looking forward to hearing from you.